We're all hungry for connection, aren't we? And we want to be connected with ourselves. We want to be integrated. We want to have integrity within our being. And then what about other people? We want to be connected with other people, but sometimes, sometimes they just don't behave the way we want them to. How do you connect with that? Um, I, was, I was working with a church once. Um, sometimes I'm called into churches to do peacemaking work. And I was working with a church where they'd gone through some very tough times, and there was a circle of people who were wounded, experiencing how hurt they were, that people that they thought professed and, and believed and taught certain things didn't live up to them. And, and I was actually asked this question. How can it be that a person who says and, 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 and demonstrates this teaching acts like that? How can this person do that? And I said, they didn't. And they said, they didn't. I said, no. That person, the person who, who is that part of them, the spiritual self, the Christ in them, that, that in this case had taught them for so many years, was sincere and meant every word of it and was absolutely connected. It's the outer personality self that's doing the misbehavior, and that's not this heart. So they, don't, try to, don't try to make sense of it in that way. Everyone has a good heart. We don't always live from that good heart. We, have, we operate on two levels. We operate on the level of the heart of us, the Christ in us, the spiritual nature of us. And then there's the outer part of ourselves. And that outer part of ourselves doesn't always live up to that ideal. So how do you deal with that within yourself, with other people, with humanity? Today we're going to talk about connectedness, how to get connected. How to get connected with yourself, with other people, and with all of humanity. And understand that there is that in you which is already connected. You just have to get in touch with it. I experienced this heart connection, and that's where we feel it most of all, for the very first time back in 1977. In 1977, everything fell apart in my life. My work situation, my, my relationship situation, my, my, uh, my neighbors upstairs were beating their wives and kids. Um, uh, my meditation teacher went off the deep end. Everything went wrong. But every year or two, I like to tell this story. And I was just, I didn't know what to do. And have you ever had a situation in life that was so much pressure that it, it's like squeezed out of you that spiritual essence? <laughs> How many people know what I'm talking about? So much pressure that you just couldn't deal with it any other way. And so it came out of me. I sat on the edge of my bed and I just said, help. And I felt a warmth in my heart. It was palpable. It was actually, it wasn't a physical warmth, but I felt it almost physically. It was so energetic. And the words came, behold, I give you a new heart. A heart, I, I take away your heart of stone and I give you a heart of flesh. And that came out of Ezekiel, I think. And, that, that, and I could feel that heart opening. And what came to me, if you ever had a revelation where you just knew from the tip of your toes to the top of your head exactly what you were supposed to do, and what came to me was that if I would take a moment and move into this feeling of my heart, I'd know what to do in all these situations. And it, at that moment, I felt connected with everything. But that's always there. It's that close. It's that close. We think it's so far away. We think our connection is way up here. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we think of that love as something that's way far off. No matter how long we've been in unity, maybe that's just the way it feels. And sometimes... It makes sense it feels like that because the consciousness we're in feels a long way off from that. But we've got to remember that that, that oneness is always here. <coughs> through that inner heart, through that heart that's within us, we're connected with the heart of the universe, with the heart of all creation, with the heart of other people, and most of all with our own heart. And our own heart is right here, right now. So how, what do you do to connect? How do you connect with your heart? Do you use nature? In this book, uh, Prosperity for You, she talks about, Cynthia Alison Anderson talks about the connection with nature. Now, she's one quarter Cherokee, and her grandmother taught her the old ways, she said. And the old ways had to do with connecting with all that is, with creation. And through the heart of creation, connecting, connecting with everything, connecting and finding your answers. And I found that out when I was uh, 13, 14 years old, and I was put in charge when I was in the Youth of Unity. I was put in charge of, 
of the prayer panel material. I had to write uh, meditation lessons, kind of like a little daily word, for all the Youth of Unity groups. And if they would then take those lessons, and actually half the groups in our region would have a 15-minute meditation before or after or their class or during the week. And so I thought, oh, this is easy. You know, I've been in Unity all my life. So I started writing up my, my little lesson. And they couldn't, I mean, I just couldn't, it was dead. It didn't have any life. It was completely meaningless. And so I thought, what do I do? And they went, duh, if you want them to meditate and pray with it, then, well, you might as well, you're going to have to get in touch with your own inner source and your own meditation. And so I took the moment. I went on my bicycle up to the local park where there was a beautiful stream. And I found out later it was sacred to the Native American, the o Ohlone tribe in, in uh, East uh, Bay of, of San Francisco Bay. And it was actually a sacred spot, but I didn't know it at the time, but the energy was so powerful there. And you could smell the bay laurel trees and the eucalyptus trees and hear the water coming along that creek. And I would go there every single day for at least 10 minutes. And during those 10 minutes, I would read for a few moments uh, out of a book of my dad's, Search for God by Edgar Casey. They sell it in the bookstore there. And I would read a few sentences, and then I would just feel into nature and how that meaning, how those words had meaning in nature itself. And that would bring forth the essence of my own being. Now, do you take the time to walk around the block or dig in your garden or, or, or maybe it's too cold. You say it's too cold. Sit by your window and look out and connect and connect. That's one way. Another way to connect is what? To connect with other people. You say, but they don't behave the way I want them to. <laughs> oh, that brings us to the question of what is, what is it we're connecting with? When they said, well, how can this person do this? Ah, this person didn't do this. So connect with this part. Connect the, with the spiritual nature and then let that other part go. You can set firm boundaries. You can do what you need to do. You know, when I sat by the side of my bed and I, and I said, help, and I got this feeling, and I knew that whatever I was dealing with, I would know what to do if I just went into my heart. And you know what, what surprised me? My heart knew what to do. Sometimes my heart, would I would just walk away. I wouldn't give any thought to it. Sometimes I'd be firm. I might say something, very rarely. Sometimes I would, often I'd make a joke out of it. Because, I mean, why not? It's silly. And one of the things that came to me was this. How would I react if I didn't take this personally? If I didn't take this personally, how would I respond to this situation? Oh, that was a whole different thing. Because it was never about me. It's not about me. It's about what? It's about certainly how I show up in it and my spiritual growth in it. But that's, I'm not in that. That is not who I am. And then I know what to do. And sometimes I would leaves, uh, walk away, sometimes I would make a joke. I worked in a hardware store, and that was really where a lot of my energy came from. It, it was a community that had a naval base, and there were a lot of retired naval officers who'd come in there, and they didn't have any enlisted men to boss around anymore, so they would do it to me. And I took it personally. And they, but it had nothing to do with me. So sometimes I would just ignore it. Sometimes I'd think it was funny. Sometimes I'd, I'd kid around with them, and sometimes I'd get them to laugh, most of the time not. <laughs> Sometimes I walk away, once in a while I'd say something. But it didn't matter because the heart knows. My heart already knows what to do. Together? My, my heart, heart already knows, knows what, what to do. do. Because my heart is already connected. Together? Because my heart is already connected. There is that part of you that knows. But we get so caught up in the outer part of us. I love this quote from Eckhart Tolle. He said, boredom, anger, sadness, and fear are not yours. They're not personal. They're conditions of your human mind. They come and go, and nothing that comes and goes is you. So how do you get in touch with that you that isn't all that and feel connected with that you that you are? Ah, get in touch with your heart. Don't take it personally or ask yourself, if... If I could not take this personally, how would I respond? That lets you off the hook a little bit. Gives you a little bit of openness there. Well, I'm not really saying I have to not take it personally. I'm just saying if I did. And then, of course, that opens you up a little bit. How can you do this? 
you open up to your intuition. Ah, what happens when you do this, when you create that little gap from the rational mind, you move up into the spiritual mind. From the intellect, you move up into the intuition. When you move into your heart, that's where all the knowledge is. That's where your center is. That's where your sacred center is. And then you know what to do. I love this quote from Albert Einstein. He said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. But in our society, we've created a society that honors the servant, but has forgotten the gift. And he practiced this. You know, he came up, of course, with E equals MC squared, with the, with the, with the uh, uh, theory of relativity. But that wasn't just out of his intellect. It didn't come from his intellect at all. He said later in life to an interviewer on, on NBC News, he said that he had a dream when he was a child. And in the dream, he was going down a snowy hill faster and faster and faster until he went to the speed, what he found out later was the speed of light. Of course, he didn't know that as a child, but it was so fast, it was infinitely fast, and the stars just changed. And it was a symbolic depiction of what happens when you reach that speed of light. And it changes space and time. And he said, my entire life and career has been a meditation on that dream. Where did it come from? It came from that sacred part of him, that sacred gift not the rational mind, the servant, but the intuitive self. And not only, you know, the, the other big theory is quantum theory. That also came out of a dream. Niels Bohr was a, lived uh, in a friend of mine's house when she was growing up for a month. And he said in an interview once that uh, he came up with quantum theory, he said that he had a dream in which there were um, horses going around in a racetrack and they were in specific um, lanes. They were in very definite lanes. And then a horse would blip to another lane, and then blip to another lane. That's the quantum leap. And that's what electrons do in their orbits. Yeah. And, of course, he didn't know any of that stuff. And he meditated on it and thought about it. And, it came, and he came up with that whole understanding. Okay, you're not going to come up with quantum theory. You're not going to come up with E equals MC squared. But you can maybe get an answer in your life. Maybe you can feel connected. Maybe you can feel connected with somebody who's not even here. One of the hardest things in life is we want to connect with maybe somebody who's not here anymore physically. There may be, and when I do a memorial service, and I've done 500 of them in, over the 40 years I've been a minister, I always share a time in which I say to them, there's the most common thing in a time like this is to sit there and think to yourself, oh, I wish I'd said this. Oh, I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd expressed this, but the truth is that the connection between your heart and their heart is limitless and goes beyond the dimensions, and right now, in this moment, they are more open to your communication with them than they ever were when they were in their physical body. And of course, all these people in a room, I don't know what they all believe, but in that moment, it's almost like the theology of a hammer, they have a need, they, they get united, and I lead them in a prayer that have a little open space and silence, where I say, just share, share what you need to share in this now moment. That connection goes beyond the dimensions, beyond, beyond space and time, and it's real, and it's more real, like I truly believe, and I've experienced it. It's more real than if the person was with you now. I remember when I went through that, when my dad had died, and I really hadn't grieved him. This is in 1978, and I was driving, 1979, I think, I was driving Interstate 70 across Kansas. How many people have ever driven Interstate 70 across Kansas? Every so often I like to tell this story. Very few of you have experienced it. If you don't know how to meditate, just drive Interstate 70 across <laughs> Kansas because you go into a trance because it's just straight and flat. So I'd gone about 200 miles and I was listening to some music and, my, and there was a song that came on that I had heard that the musician had written for his father who died of a brain tumor. And my dad had died of a brain tumor just a few weeks before, a few months before. And so I said out loud, he wrote this for his dad. I was alone in the car, and I just, I just started bawling. And luckily, it was Interstate 70 in Kansas, so I could <laughs> cry my eyes out. As long as I kept my hands steady, I was safe. But I went for the next hour, and I released so much, and I felt so connected. Now, where in your life do you feel this need, this hunger for connection? Connection with yourself, connection with others. You say, well, the world isn't a place where I, I feel connected right now. Ah, but then realize 
that the behaviors that people are doing, that's out here. The who that they are, the heart of them, that's what you're connecting with. That's the difference, and I love to bring this up periodically, between agape and filial love. Jesus, in his time, they understood. They had more than one word for love in their language. They had eros, which is the sexual love, and then they had philia, which was brotherly, sisterly, filial, filial love, and then they had agape, which is divine, unconditional love, the love of the soul, the love of the heart, the love that's spiritual. And it says that Jesus filiaed, loved, certain of his friends, like Lazarus and, and Mary and Martha and some of the disciples. They were buddies. They hung out together. They were friends. He liked them, basically. They were people that he had a filial relationship with. But when Jesus said things like, love one another, love your neighbor as yourself, he wasn't saying that you need to love them like that. You can set good boundaries. You can even withdraw from somebody and not have them in your life. But the place that you really love is in the level of the heart, the level of the soul. And that's agape love. So where do you love from? So how do you connect? How do you connect? Do you connect with nature? How about, uh, how about with animals? With, with your dog? With your cat? You think, oh, you know, that an animal, what did, they, what, what, did they have a soul? Oh, if you ever had a dog, you know that dog's got a soul. And sometimes the dog doesn't live from its soul, it lives out here. But anyway, but you just, you love that. You love that sweet, the sweetness in, in creation. And you love that sweetness in yourself. And when the world conditions are the way they are, and you read the news headlines, and you go into all these things, there's nothing wrong with being active, there's nothing wrong with having opinions and, and taking action. But... That's not it. Move into that, that inner, that inner something that knows what to do. <clears throat> There's that which needs an expression in you, but sometimes, sometimes it takes tough circumstances to put pressure on you to then get you to move into your heart. I love this from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. You know, she, invent, she came up with the, uh, the concept of the hospice movement. She sat by the bed of the dead and dying 5,000 people. And she said this, when we're dying, we get rid of all the baloney. <clears throat> we throw all the baloney overboard. All those things that used to be important, like whether we can have that mink coat or get that vacation condo or that car, all those things disappear and we have limited time. You know, some of my patients get well again. But always, they have changed values and a whole philosophy of life. And they do that because they don't have time for the other stuff. People who've gone through recovery, they don't have time for all that other stuff. People who've gone through difficult situations and they have pressures, and a few feels of pressures, realize this, don't take it personally. I don't take this personally, together. I don't take this personally. I accept the gift, together. I accept the gift. And there's a gift in it for you if you don't take it personally. And then what happens? It opens up the space of possibility where you can try something new, where you can not deal with it with the same conditioned, reflexive, reactive mind, but you might try something new. You might do nothing. Or you might be guided to a divine idea, which brings me to one of my favorite affirmations for getting in touch with that heart space that knows that intuitive mind. Thank you, God, for a divine idea. Together, thank you, God, for a divine idea. Now, what do I mean by a divine idea? I mean something that is whole and connected, that meets the needs of everyone, that is, connects my heart, gets in touch with my heart, connects with other people's hearts, connects with the heart of creation and the heart of God. You know, God, God, God is the great heart. But I, I wanted to start this this talk, talking about getting in touch with what we really have control over, which is our own hearts. And we think, well, God is out there. i got to get in touch with this heart that's out there. But no, the heart of God is right here. When you get in touch with your own heart, you're getting in touch with the heart of God because there is no separation between you and God. And we think, oh, you know, I've overcome all my childhood religious conditioning. I really know that God is in my heart. But sometimes when things are tough, we, we think of God as way out there, and maybe that works for a short period of time. We've got to always bring it back, bring it back, bring it back into our own hearts. Become aware that we're connected on the level of heart, that the intuitive mind is the mind of the soul. The intellect is the mind of the ego. The intuitive mind, the, the intuitive mind is that precious gift, precious gift 
but the rational mind is, is the servant and should serve that precious gift. There's a wonderful quote from Marcus Aurelius. He said, always see the universe as one living being, having one substance and one soul. Then you can notice how all things connect with that one mind, the mind of that one living being. Okay, that's very lofty. Now what happens when you're talking to somebody and you don't feel present with them or you don't feel you can be present with them? My teacher taught me something. She said, just breathe in, I am, and breathe out, you. And you listen to them too while you're doing it. It makes you more present. I am you. I am you. And she said, blend energies. Blend energies with them. Blend energies with them. Now there are times to set boundaries, yes. But when you, I am you, you're connecting with the heart of them. And the behavior does whatever it's going to do. But the heart, that's where we're connecting. So let's take a moment and connect on the level of the heart. Shall we? Let's just take a moment and begin with our own physical hearts. It's, that's something all of us can feel. So all of us can feel the heart beating in our chest, which reminds us that there is a great beating heart energetically in our soul. This is our spiritual connection, the love in our heart. I have a good heart, a heart of kindness, compassion. I have a good heart, a heart of understanding and empathy, a warm heart, a caring heart, a good heart. I am my good heart. And I remind myself, as I move into this heart space, I know that I am connected with the hearts of all, the hearts of people who behave the way I'd like or the way I wouldn't like. Either way, we are connected in the heart. And all of humanity whether humanity is waging war or peace, whether humanity is behaving the way we would like, all of humankind is connected to the level of the heart. And the heart is mightier, more powerful than the conditions of the world. I accept my connection through my heart and the heart of all others with the heart of creation itself. And I just gratefully appreciate all, all the creation that's around me, the beginnings, the peaking forth of spring, the beauty of this day, and the hidden beauties. And I vow to open up and appreciate more because it opens my heart. As I open up to the heart of creation, I am opening to the heart of God. And I just dwell in this good heart. I am my good heart. <coughs> now we know exactly what to do and how to do it. We know who to be and how to show up. We know how we're connected as we move into our heart space. We are connected with ourselves, with others, with creation and with God. Thank you, God. And so it is. And now as you take a deep breath and you let go into this now moment, let go into your heart. And setting aside all papers in your hands, just move into this now moment with no thoughts, no attachments. Begin with your own heart. You're already connected with all that is. And your heart, your heart knows that connection. I have a good heart. Feel your way into your heart.
letting go of all thoughts and moving into the feeling that's there, represented by that heart beating in your chest, the energy that is there, the life that supports you with flowing molten love, moving through your body and energizing you. I am my good heart. We wish to reconnect. To reconnect that sometimes fragmented or separated self with the all that is. I am my good heart. And my heart is connected with the hearts of everyone. And no matter whether they remember it or live from it or whether I do, this deep flowing agape love in my heart is my connection with my source, my being. I am connected with my flowing heart, with everyone else's. And I have a grateful heart. Grateful for the souls in my life who nurture and support me. I remember that on the cross, Jesus took the time to say to this disciple that he loved, Behold your mother. And to his mother, woman, behold your son knowing the need for connection, even in a moment like that. And we are grateful for the connection that we have. A connection that has no separation or distance. We are connected across the dimensions with our own heart and with the hearts of others and all of creation itself. And we take a moment to gratefully give thanks for the new life that is coming forth this spring. With a warm heart of appreciation, we connect with the beauty of this day the greenery that's coming forth and the new life that is rising in our soul, in our heart, in our beingness. Oh God, thank you for life. Thank you for the beauty that's at the very center in the heart of all of creation, of all people, of ourselves. And through this interdependence, this connectedness. We say in our hearts, be still and know that I am God. In a very real sense, the heart is the altar the sacred holy of holies, the space in which the sacred connection is made, contact, my heart with the heart of creation, the heart of humanity, the heart of God. I dwell here for a moment, connected, reconnected in my heart. I have a good heart. I am <coughs> my good heart. 
gently and silently. Remind yourself, I have a good heart. I am my good heart. And move into this now moment presence. Love is infinite. Love is kind. Love is warm. Love is. And on the level of my heart, I am already one with myself, my neighbor, with all of creation, with God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. A new command I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so it is. We're going to take our offering, and it's our interconnectedness with our heart. So, I give... I give connected in my heart and I receive abundantly. Together. I give connected in my heart and I receive abundantly. And silently. And again aloud together. I give connected in my heart and I receive abundantly. And so it is. Amen.
remember that, that time 2,000 years ago when that little boy had five loaves and two fish? Seven. Five plus two, the, the, the number of creation. And if we've got to create something, if there's a change that has to happen in our lives, we've got to get into that child, that childlike attitude. Open-eyed wonder and possibility. And so in this now moment, we acknowledge our grateful heart. I have a grateful heart, and my grateful heart touches, and everything it touches is transformed in gratitude. It was never about the loaves and the fish. It was about the energy and the life and the vibration of thank you, thank you, thank you. And so I recreate that scene and I begin by getting quiet as he had them all sit down. I say, be still, my mind. Be still, my feelings, my thoughts. And I become so still that I can feel my heart beating and notice my breath coming in and out. I am so grateful. And I remember that he looked up so I allow myself to lift up, to lighten up and let go. That self of faith, that part of me that is untethered, open receptive to all possibility. That part of me is opening up and lifting up and opening wide. And then he gave thanks and I just move into that gratitude space of thank you, thank you, thank you that touches everything and transforms all it touches. that inner child, that inner quiet, that lifting up, that gratitude. Entered into the substance of what was and turned it into the possibility of what could be. Oh God, my heart is overfilled and overflowing with gratitude in this now moment. And I'm just going to move into that space where all my heart can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. And then he moved into action and passed around what he had. And we move into directed, focused action now that we have taken that spiritual substance into our hearts and we have lifted it up and we've given thanks. And we're moving into the fulfillment of our heart, our soul, our dream. The fulfillment of the being that we are. Thank you for the very best. Thank you. Thank you for the highest good. Thank you. Thank you for divine order and blessings for all. Thank you. Thank you. And so it is.